You'll float too. Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a Pennywise cake. So I asked my patrons what spooky character I should make, and they chose Pennywise. So thank you, patrons, because I love this cake, and I'm super excited I got to make it. If you want to help me come up with my next cake design, you can head to patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes. Let's get started. I started out with a template of Pennywise that I drew to size. That way I can place the template directly on my layers of cake and cut around it. So I first, I cut the head out, and then I took my template, I cut the hair away, and then I'm gonna place the hair directly on another layer of cake, and I'm gonna trim away to create two separate sections of hair. Now the reason I did it in two sections is because I wanna make sure that I'm just using this one round layer of cake, but I can get everything in there. Now if I just place the template directly on the cake, it doesn't fit. If I did have a larger cake, like a sheet cake, I could probably pull it off. But it's totally fine if you cut away sections. You don't want to waste. Next, I'm going to carve out the face and the hair. What I'm really focusing on is making sure that the hair is slightly more shallow and the head is raised. Now his forehead's huge, so having that separation from the forehead to the hair is great. That way I can trim away the hair right up to that line and I don't have to think too hard. I know that these proportions are correct. You really just wanna round out the edges and shape it a little bit. I added a layer of chocolate buttercream and another layer of cake and then I trimmed around it. Now that's because the forehead is really large and it's the most raised area of this cake. So I needed to add a little bit more cake. I also realized that the center of his hair, it needed to be raised a bit more. I say that that middle chunk of hair is about even with his forehead. Next, I wanna add a layer of buttercream. This is called a crumb coat. And I'm just taking an offset spatula and smoothing the buttercream all around the cake until it's completely covered. You wanna keep this nice and smooth and also very thin. Then you roll out some modeling chocolate and I place it directly on the cake and you can trim away some of that modeling chocolate and start to work it around the edges. Now it's time to start sculpting the face. So since I have my template, I can actually use a tool and trace out the size of the mouth and the nose and the eyes. That way I know exactly how wide the mouth needs to be and how wide the nose is. It's a lot easier than eyeballing it and just trying your best to get your proportions correct. You might as well use the template if you have it. Now this is all modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is amazing to sculpt with. I would say it's the easiest thing to sculpt with that's edible. I didn't make the nose out of cake because that's just kind of a waste of time in my opinion. It's such a small nose that really if you just put modeling chocolate on there, it's perfectly fine. So I just take my tools and I'm bulking up the cheeks a little bit. This is all chocolate, but it's mostly cake. This isn't a super thick, layer of modeling chocolate. So I'm sculpting out all the details. I'm adding the eyes. He's got a really large brow, so I added some more modeling chocolate around the brow too. Next I wanted to add his crow's feet. He has a few wrinkles on the edges and some texture. His eyebrows are really fun. They are super over plucked and thin. <laughs> It's like my eyebrows in the 90s, so this was very, very easy for me to replicate. <laughs> then I went in and added a few little details and wrinkles. So for the teeth, I put in the basic shape of the teeth, and then I go in and sculpt each individual tooth. Then I added his ears, and I started working on his hair. To sculpt the hair, I find that if I have some really deep areas and some more shallow areas, that makes for the best sculpted hair. So sometimes I'm taking my tool and I'm digging in really deep, and then sometimes I'm just lightly feathering the tool over top, so I have a bunch of different textures.
Next I'm adding his collar. This is just modeling chocolate. And I took a pointed tool and I just worked the lines from his cheeks and his chin out to the edge of the cake board. So it's just a bunch of lines kind of radiating out of his face. Next, I took a pointed tool. It's very, very pointed, very sharp, and I added pretty much scratches all over his face. So that's gonna add some texture. Then to paint, I started by painting the entire face gray, and then I wipe away that gray so that the gray went into all those cracks, and then I added white food color. His mouth was really fun. His makeup overall is really fun. Uh, the mouth with those weird yellowy teeth, and then his lips are pretty much just outlined in red. His nose was just red, and it's painted on. Very, very fun to paint. <laughs> and he also has these golden eyes, so I outlined the outside edge in brown, and then as you go towards the center, it turns into a gold, and then a very, very light gold. Then I went in and added his eyeliner. So he has a, a very dark eyeliner around the eye, and then it's a bit of a smoky eye. So then the black starts to blend into the white. So I go back and forth between the black and the white to create this blended effect around his eyes. So I fill in with black, and then I take the white, and I go in and I dab, and then I go back to the black, so I'm going back and forth until I like the way it looks. It's a bit of a gradient, so it goes from very, very dark outline around his eyes and then fades into the white. I noticed that's very dark uh, right in the centers of his eyes, too. This is fun. It's like using makeup. I defined his eyebrows just a little more with some gray food color, and then I go over it with a nice, clean, dry brush and clean it up a bit. Then I wanted to add a little bit more yellow to his teeth. I noticed in the pictures his teeth are pretty rotten, so I added more yellow. Uh, and there's quite a few colors in there. Some of the red got in there, and I think that's totally fine when the colors start to blend. While the food color was still wet, I took a nice soft brush, I dipped it in powdered sugar, and then I just caked it on his head and his face. That gave this awesome makeup effect. Like it looks like white caked on makeup, just like a clown. Then it was time to clean up those red lines a bit. I want them to be nice and vibrant, and they're pretty clean. So I was sure to take my time with it and make sure that the lines a very similar thickness, and then it tapers up above his eye. I can't stress how fun this was to paint. <laughs> it's not every day you get to paint clown makeup. Then I took this super, super tiny brush that I have, and I made the little tapered points extra pointy and detailed. You can see all that caked on powdered makeup, which is really just powdered sugar. Next, it's time to color his hair. It is like a reddish orange, and then I added a little bit of brown. So with the brown, I went in in those really deep areas, made those darker, and around his hairline is a little bit darker too. For the color, I took gray, I made sure the entire thing was painted, then I wiped away some of that color and added a final layer of white. Then you gotta clean up that cake board because things get messy. And there you have it super duper creepy Pennywise cake.